Sorry about that. Just wanted to set the mood. Well, today on Game Files, we're taking a look at perhaps the chillest, most relaxing game series to ever grace a Nintendo console, Animal Crossing. The open-ended social simulation game lets you live a peaceful life in a village of anthropomorphic animals. You can catch bugs, decorate your house, make friends, and deal with the most predatory capitalists this side of Bernie Madoff. It's become one of the most popular Nintendo franchises, had its characters featured in Super Smash Bros, and is responsible for a lot of great memes. Animal Crossing's roots date back to the 90s. If you were to ask your average Western fan what console it was first released for, they'd likely say the GameCube. In truth, the series originally released in Japan for the Nintendo 64. Animal Crossing was in development for the 64DD, the magnetic disk drive system that had rewritable disk storage, a real-time clock for persistent worlds, and could connect to the internet for online multiplayer. It was also originally envisioned to be an online multiplayer RPG, where players could visit each other. But the numerous delays for the 64DD, along with the small sales that accompanied it when it did launch in Japan in December 1999, caused online to be discarded in order to release it as a single cartridge. They did, however, include a real-time clock chip within the cartridge itself. Animal Crossing, known in Japan as Dobutsu no Mori, launched in December 2001. The decision was quickly made to release it for the GameCube in other territories, and it proved to be one of the largest localization projects Nintendo had ever attempted. Not only did Nintendo have to translate thousands of lines, it had to invent new holidays and items so that it would be relatable. Turns out, the work was well worth it. More than two million copies were sold worldwide, and it's since come to be regarded as one of the best GameCube games ever made. The Western version proved to be so beloved by Nintendo of Japan that they would release it in Japan as an enhanced version of the original. But as successful as it was, Animal Crossing was still a nascent franchise. There were still improvements to be made, and when work began on a DS sequel, that was on the forefront of Nintendo's mind. Animal Crossing Wild World was the first portable entry in the series and would be the first to launch feature complete. Its inclusion of multiplayer, a new control scheme, and more interactive villagers would finalize the foundation of what Animal Crossing is known for today. The franchise thrives on establishing a sense of community, and being able to visit friends' villages proved to be a key factor in that. The next Animal Crossing entry was practically guaranteed to be a success thanks to the console it appeared on, the Wii. Animal Crossing, City's Folk's biggest feature was the addition of a city, where players could go and buy new items and interact with the new characters. It wasn't the best Animal Crossing game, it's probably the worst out of the core entries in the franchise, in all honesty. But it was Animal Crossing, and for many, that was good enough. Whatever faults city folk had were promptly forgotten when Animal Crossing New Leaf released for the 3DS in 2012. It turned Animal Crossing on its head by making the player the mayor of the town, letting them decide on ordinances and public work projects that would change its look. This added a level of customization that has made New Leaf the most popular Animal Crossing game to date, selling over 12 million copies. Heck, it sold systems by itself. New Leaf is still being played today, and it's arguably the best in the series. And as many franchises do, Animal Crossing would get a number of spin-offs. As you'd expect, the quality varies, to put it politely. The first, Happy Home Designer, is all about house design. All you do is build and design homes for characters, and that's it. If you like designing homes and moving furniture, congratulations, this game was made solely for you. As mediocre as Happy Home Designer was, it pales in comparison to Amiibo Festival. Just like the Mario Party series, you roam around a board collecting money and taking part in random events. And just like Mario Party, it sucks. Actually, it's worse than Mario Party, because Amiibo Festival barely has any minigames. The third spin-off was much more successful. Animal Crossing Pocket Camp may have microtransactions, but it still retains the social aspects that made the franchise popular in the first place. It remains one of Nintendo's best mobile games, which isn't a high bar to be fair, because it captures some of the spirit of what makes Animal Crossing good. But after years of spin-offs, the first entry in the main series is set to release for the Nintendo Switch in March 2020. Animal Crossing New Horizons isn't set in a town, however. 
Instead, you move to a deserted island after buying a vacation package from Tom Nook, who can never have too much money. It will feature eight player multiplayer, even more customization options, crafting, and likely a few surprises as well. Animal Crossing became what it is today because of that slow iteration. By emphasizing community and designing around that aspect with each sequel, Nintendo has created a slow-paced social game that brings people together. It's peaceful, relaxing, and above all else, fun to play.